Hello, everyone. Very excited to be here. Uh, welcome to this talk on declarative configuration. How many people here do not use Kong? OK, small group. OK, so as Rob mentioned, Kong has an admin API, and you can configure Kong. I came across Kong about two years ago. I was at a large tech company, and we, I was, my team was in charge of transforming the API strategy for the company. We settled on Kong as the API gateway for us, uh, but we wanted to do a lot more than just API gateway. This tech company was about 50 years old, is about 50 years old. So there's a lot of legacy behind it. So with legacy comes an ancient database, which is ancient according to today's standard, which was the master database for us. We stored all our configurations, all our documentation, everything inside this master database. Now, as we were transforming this journey, we wanted to use Kong. And this is two years ago, so we had to store the configuration for Kong either in Postgres or Cassandra. Cassandra was quickly ruled out by the operations team. So that was sad even though we ran across the world with multiple data centers. So we are stuck with Postgres. So we started doing our Kong deployment, and we did a shadow of the main configuration. So we stored a lot of configuration and metadata of APIs in the master database, but we had a subset of that configuration in a Postgres database, which is what Kong used. This is great. You get that Kong is running, Kong is proxying our traffic. But as I said, this is a large multinational company, which means you have multiple databases. Now, from the look that I'm getting, people say, Harry, this is a terrible architecture you designed. Why didn't they fire you? Uh, well, as we heard from Rajiv in the session before, you can change only one thing at a time in a large legacy environment. So here, we ran into this special problem where we had the master database, and we had to replicate that across multiple regions. This is two years ago, so no fancy DB-less mode of Kong was around that we could use. So what we did, we, we resorted to, again, open source community. Kong is open source, and we love the community. So we came across a project called Kongfig, which was fairly popular at the time and was a great start for us. We rendered a declarative configuration for us and pushed in to all the Postgres databases across multiple data centers. We started great, but we had problems when we actually scaled it out and had some issues with it. First, it seemed to be abandoned. Uh, the original authors of Config seemed to have moved on to some other project and had moved on from Kong. Second, it was fairly slow. It did not parallelize operations. So if you have a REST API of Kong admin, you're pushing one change at a time. It can take a very long to sync the entire configuration to Kong. And third, the most important one, it did not have any drift detection. What I mean by that, I'll explain you in a bit, but it's mainly about single source of truth. So last year, I was here at Kong Summit, and we had put on like a sticky note board, and everybody was putting on, okay, I want this feature in Kong. And one feature that standed out the most was we want declarative configuration for Kong. Everybody wanted that. We had so many plus ones on that. And last year, I started building Kong's ingress controller, and we, I ran into the exact same problem again. There is no way to declaratively configure all of Kong. So then I decided, let me solve this problem for the community and for good. So I set out a few goals when I started. The first one, I wanted declarative configuration. Well, duh, that's obvious. Like That's what the problem was. But I wanted the tool to make incremental changes. You cannot just have the configuration once. Like in any life cycle, you will create a service on the first day. Later on, you will create another service. You will make some changes to the previous ones. 
And in future, entropy comes in and you create another service, a better version of the service, delete the old service. So over time, you want to change things. Sometimes you want to make these changes multiple times in a day. Second, I wanted to do drift detection. What do I mean by drift is that I want a single source of truth. I want a config file, and I want that to run my API gateway. Well, that's great. But if I tell you that something is true, and I can't prove it, well, that's just like me having my conversation with my girlfriend. I need to prove something that that is indeed the truth. So here we can see that somebody has changed the protocol for a service to HTTPS, which is more secure. But that's not what is in the config file. So in case Kong goes away and we are doing a disaster recovery for Kong, our configuration won't work. So verification is very important here. Third, I wanted a distributed configuration. So this sounds a little contradictory, because I just told you I want a single source of truth. What, what are you talking about? So what I mean here is that in a large organization, you'll have multiple teams. You want each team to manage their API, and you want each team to manage their configuration. You do not want a single unified pool of configuration. So let's say you are running an online shop, and you have two teams, one team handling the billings, the finance orders, the other team doing user management. You want those teams to have control over their part of the configuration. You do not want them to overstep each other. If one team wants to change something, you do not want to contact the other team. You want them to empower them, them so that they can make their changes whenever they want. Great, so we want three things. We want declarative configuration, we want to verify if my configuration is correct, and I want to give this power to each and every team in my organization. So I started with this goal last year. I went back after the summit, heard everyone, and earlier this year, I released a tool called DEC. It was open sourced earlier in Jan, and I started with just declarative configuration. And over the year, I've tried to build each of the things that I have been talking about today. So who wants to see a demo? <laughs> All right. Let's see. The demo gods, be with me. OK, so I've got Kong running here locally. Uh, we have Kong 1.3. And uh, let's see to talk, uh, let's see if we can talk to the Kong's admin API. This talk is all about configuring Kong. So we are not testing Kong's capability. We're just testing if we can configure Kong correctly. So you can see we have got Kong 1.3 here. How would you install DEC? So I am currently on Mac OS. So I can just do a brew tap, hbackd slash DEC, and brew install DEC. And that's it. You have DEC installed on your Mac. If you're running Linux or Windows, you can install it via an apt-get or similar repositories. I've got DEC already installed here. So let's do DEC version. So 0.51, that came out a couple of weeks ago. DEC ping. So DEC ping do, what DEC ping does, it will tell you if it is able to talk to Kong or not. So this works with Kong Enterprise as well. So you have installed DEC, we have got, Kong, you've got it talking to Kong. Now, let's check out some declarative configuration. So here, I've got a Kong service and a route. So here we have a service named service1, which proxies to mockbin. And we have a route which only serves HTTPS. So anytime if somebody sends an HTTP request, Kong will respond back with a 302 and gets redirected to HTTP. We are also running in a, let's say we are running in a Prometheus environment, so we have enabled the Prometheus plugin globally in Kong. Great, so we have this config file here. 
let's see what is the diff of the file. So what deck diff tells you is it takes the existing state in Kong and compares it with the config file. So what deck is telling you right now that it is going to create these two services and a route and a plugin. So it's, it's like a dry mode. OK, let's sync this configuration up to Kong. All right, so deck sync the configuration up. Let's do a diff again, and it says it's not going to do anything. Let's go ahead and check the services here. You can see here we have service two, and we have service one. Let's go ahead and check for plugins. You can see that Prometheus plugin is installed. Now, let's make some changes to the configuration file. So here, uh, what do we want? Let's say we bought a domain name. And we want to do, why that specific domain? Because I own the domain. Uh, all right, and what else? Mm, that should be it. Let's also change the protocol, upstream protocol, to HTTPS, because we want things to be secure. And that would be on port 443. All right, that looks correct. Now let's do a diff. Awesome, so now here you can say, diff is again a dry run, so these changes have not taken place. We can integrate this with our CI CD pipeline and run and make sure that Kong has the updated configuration. So here we can say that we changed the path from slash r1 to v1, and we have got our hosts are going to be added. We didn't have any host before, but now we are going to have api.yulu42.com. And we can see that our port for service one is going to change from 80 to 443. And the protocol, obviously, to HTTPS. All right, so let's go ahead and sync this configuration. So now I go ahead and look at my service. You can see that we have the protocol is HTTPS. The port is defined as 443. Let's look at the route. The route has v1 and host as api.yulu42.com. Excuse me. All right, this is great. So we have our Kong YAML file. Let's go ahead and create a new file in this directory. Give me a username. Yeah, come on. <laughs> Let's get innovative. Nah? Uh, OK, Bob the Builder. Only if I can spell that right. And YOLO. Big believer, big believer in YOLO. So let's do it. OK, so now I'm going to again diff the state, but this time I'm going to pass it the entire directory. I'm not passing it a single state file. I'm passing it a directory. So what deck will do is it will go through and take every JSON and YAML file, try to read it, and construct a state. So if I, st if I construct this state, it tells me that it found two new things. So it's going to create these consumers. So let's go ahead and create these consumers. All right, so those consumers are in Kong. So you can have multiple files in the same directory or in subdirectories. Now, so this proves that we can apply the first thing. We have a declarative configuration, and we can make changes incrementally, right? We added things, we deleted things, we updated things. Now let's say we have got a Dave in our organization. What he does, he goes into the API and changes things around as, per, as he likes. So he goes around, creates a consumer because he's debugging things. Dave can be an SRE or an engineer or whoever, and he makes these changes. Or he's using Kong Manager and fiddling around things, and by mistake, he updates something which is something very common. If, if we are using AWS Cloud or any other platform, if you have UI access to it, you will change things, not because you want to harm other people, but you will do that by mistake. And you want to track these changes in a 
Git repository, or somehow you want to track these changes and not do them manually, because you can't repeat these things. If you have con running in multiple data centers, you want to push this same configuration out everywhere. If a configuration works today, you want it to work a year from now, or when it, until you change anything in the system. OK, so let's simulate that. So let's add a route. So we have services. We had service 2. Let's add a route with a name. Come on, default route dash f. OK, so what we have just created is a fallback route. So any HTTP request that comes to Kong will be sent to this route, right? So this could also be a little bit of malicious, but that's not the scope of it. But any default request by default, if no other route gets matched, this is the route it will go to. Let's also go ahead and delete a consumer. So we created two consumers. Let's delete the YOLO consumer because it was YOLO. All right, so we deleted that. Now let's run diff again. And what do we see? We see, is it big enough for you guys? We see that the YOLO consumer will be recreated because DEC did not find it inside Kong. And it did not find the default route that we manually created inside any config file. So it's going to delete that. Right, so this is very powerful. You can run this as a cron job in your CI or anywhere and check if anybody is making any manual changes and detect those and reset that. You can fail that Jenkins job or you can alert somebody in Slack. So you have drift detection for Kong. All right, so we have got drift detection covered. We have got declarative configuration covered. Moving on, let's reset the configuration here. So deck reset, what it will do is it will clean all the entities that it is managing right now. So let's go ahead and de delete that. If we go ahead and see consumers, we'll see we don't have any consumers. And same for services. Kong's database is essentially empty. Now the third thing that we wanted to solve was distributed configuration. And this is like the key thing that I think most people when adopting a microservices architecture need to think of. In my personal opinion, I feel microservices is not a technology paradigm, but it's an organizational structure. It's not a technology paradigm. It's an organizational structure. You want to organize your teams in a way that increases the velocity, agility for you. So in that sense, you want each team to manage your configuration. So here, let's see. So we have got two files side by side open here. We have got on team 42 manages the finance APIs. So we have an expense front end. We have an expense backend, right? And the expense backend is protected with a key auth plugin, right? So you need an API key to access and expense anything that you are doing on the company's dime. And let's say you have a user, user management API, which is managed by team 43. And that also has an API, and it has one route. That API is protected by basic authentication. So you need a user name and a password to access this API. So different authentication schemes. You can have different, excuse me, uh, different plugins. You can have any other configurations. The thing to focus on here is you have this set of select tags. Tags are metadata inside Kong, and every entity in Kong has a tag. So you have a set of tags here, which are different if you see. Both have managed by deck, but one we have team name as a tag. So what we'll do here is we'll sync one file at a time. So we'll, let's say we want to sync team 42. So we see that it says it will create the backend service, the frontend service, and a route for those. And it will protect the API with key auth. So this is very informative. You know that this plugin is being created on the expense API and not the web 
site itself. So, let us go ahead and sync this up. All right. So, that got synced up. Let us do a diff on the other team. All right. So, we again see that this time deck tells us that user details API would be created. Now, if you observe here, deck is not complaining that it is going to delete whatever it created previously. Right? Even though these things do not exist in the 40, team 43 YAML file, deck is not going to delete them. What it means is you can manage the configuration independently. So, you can have a, one team can have their own CI job, the other team can do it on, on, your, on their own as well. So, let us go ahead and sync it. Now, let us look at services. But I am going to filter out the response this time. I think this is right. Yeah, all right. And let us get the tags for those. So, we see that we have expense backend, user details, and expense frontend. The, the tags for them are different as well. So, these two expense services belong to team 42, and user detail is team 43. So, configuration coexists between two files. So, we can have distributed configuration. With Kong Enterprise, you can use workspaces as well to distribute these. Now, as the last part of the demo, I'm going to source an environment file. So, here what you're seeing is I'm using Kong Inc's cloud service, which is completely fully managed cloud. So, we don't have to manage Kong at all. So, we, we are going to set Kong address not to the Docker file that I have running locally, but I have Kong running in the cloud, and I'm going to set the RBAC password here. And now, let us sync these files, and let me show you the UI first. So, we have got, if you closely see, we have got manager cloud team dot Kong cloud dot com, and we have Kong manager, this is an enterprise feature, and we have got no routes or service or anything, the, the cluster is pretty much empty. We are going to sync this up to manager, to, to Kong enterprise this time. All right, and let's also do deck ping to prove that we are running 0 0.36 version of the enterprise offering by Kong Inc. Awesome. So let's go back here, and we see that three routes have been indeed created, and so has the services. If you create plugins, upstreams, everything will work by default. So that's it for the demo part. So we have seen how deck can do declarative configuration can see how it can do drift detection, and how you can empower multiple teams to do that. This is something that Kong Enterprise doesn't support at the moment, or Kong doesn't support, and it's a community project. The compatibility goes all the way back to Kong 1.0 that was released last summit, and for Kong Enterprise, it is compatible with 0 0.35. Compatibility is very important for DEC, uh, I'm very familiar with enterprises moving very slowly. Uh, people do not want to change their gateway deployments very often. So we have made very hard effort to make sure that you can, we, I, as we release more new versions of DEC, it remains compatible all the way till the end. So you can upgrade DEC to get those features, but don't upgrade the API gateway. Second, adoption. This is a very exciting topic for me. I have been very happy with the adoption since I released this tool earlier in this year. I ran across a few users already in the morning who are very happy with DEC. So that makes me very happy. Also, as I mentioned earlier in the talk, DEC is the core that powers Kong's ingress controller in the DB mode. So we do do drift detection and we do syncs from the Kubernetes state and push it to Kong's database. So it has been running in production for about more than six to seven months. So there's a lot of hardening that has already gone into DEC. We are constantly pushing that as well. You're seeing a lot of adoption from people who have moved over for, from Config and are moving to Kong 1.x. And we are also seeing a lot of adoption from Kong Enterprise user base as well. We are, I have a very exciting roadmap for DEC. 
and very happy to chat about i'm hanging out here later on so please find come and find me if you want to talk more about it and that's it that's all that i have today uh, as i showed you the installation is single line uh, and you can just go to this github repository and uh, check it out install it try it out uh, let me know the feedback uh, yeah and i think we have time for two questions go ahead please come to the mic so that we can hear it out thank you okay fantastic school a uh, question about the distributed configuration so from a security standpoint uh, what you know how how would like you stop team 42 from not changing team 43's apis by just changing the name of the file the way that you did yeah. i'm i'm guessing you probably have like you know all whole admin privileges but yeah. are there ways to sort of stop a certain team to not change another team's apis especially with this distributed uh, config great question so for that you will as of today you will have to resort to two two cases one is if you are a Kong Enterprise customer, you get RBAC and workspaces support out of the box. So I showed you how I added a Kong admin token. So you can have RBAC policies inside Kong, which allows you to manage only a specific workspace or specific entities inside a workspace. So you can do that at Kong layer, at Kong layer itself, okay. right? And second would be you, could, you can impose that in your CI/CD layer. So you can have checks that somebody is not making changes specifically to the tags part, because that's what makes them uh, you know, accessible across. Right. So one of the use cases that I ran in yesterday was somebody wants the entire file to be managed by teams, but the tags that are injected, they are managed by the operations team or the developer or DevOps guys, right? So there, the dev apps team does not have control over those tags. So that's something as well you can control in the CI CD layer. Uh, your best option there is to use Kong Enterprise, though. OK, thanks. Thank you. Go ahead. Hi, Harry. Uh, thanks for giving this talk. I have a quick question for you. One of the issues we ran into uh, running declarative config on Kong, and uh, in general, was this uh, issue of secrets management. Uh, could you talk a little bit about how uh, secrets are handled here? You mentioned on one slide, key off. Like, where would you store that secret, and how do you inject it? Great question. Yeah, so that's uh, a topic that, that requires more discussion. Uh, right now, whatever you have in the config file is in plain text. So if you put in a secret in there, like an API key, uh, that would be checked into a Git repository and anybody can use it. So the way to solve it is there are two solutions to that. One, you want to use things like OpenID Connect. You want to use things like Vault for authentication. Right? So your secrets are always managed and encrypted by third party services, and Kong automatically works with these tools. The second thing that I have plans to build out for, like to, in 2020 is DEC can talk to these tools and configure Kong. So you, you only store th something like an environment variable. So you store an environment, you, you, you have an environment variable in the config file, and at runtime, when DEC is actually doing the sync in your CI CD pipeline, it goes, talks to AWS KMS, or goes to talks to Vault, or you know, Google Cloud's key authentication, gets those configuration and then pushes to Kong. So you're still, you still have the power of declarative configuration, and you still don't lose out on security. So that's the two solutions. DEC will definitely have the second solution that I've talked about, at least for certificates because uh, HTTP TLS certificates, uh, you cannot check them in. And we already have quite a bit of standardization ac around them across cloud providers, and in even like you know, cloud native solutions. So that's something that I have plans to build in. All right, thank you so much for coming in here. Thank you. <laughs>